Hi, and thanks for joining. If you're new here, I'm Wendy and this is Nina's Jewels. This channel is all about flipping and reselling. If you're interested in that, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe down below so you can be kept informed of all of our latest content. Today's video is going to be what sold for the week of July 9th through 15th. Let's get started. The first thing we sold was a clean eating magazine from the months of July and August 2019. I got this magazine and a big lot of magazines that I picked up from a lady who was giving them away for free on the Nextdoor app. We sold this magazine for $7.99. We had no cost with it and it sold for its asking price. Next up was a pair of men's khaki Goodfellow brand chino pants. I had picked these up at the Goodwill bins for my son and then he didn't end up wanting them so we sold them. We paid 92 cents for them and they sold for a full asking price of $15.99. This is not a brand that I would typically pick up for resale. Um, I just picked them up for personal use and then we didn't end up needing them so we resold them. And they did resell pretty quickly, but just not for a very high price. They don't carry a very high resale value. I think this is um, maybe a Target brand. Next up was a brand new and packaged set of two Pampered Chef mosaic square tile salad plates. They were brand new in the box. The collection that these came from from Pampered Chef was called Simple Editions. We found three or four packages of these at our local thrift store. We paid $6.30 per package and we sold just one package or box of these with this sale. And it sold for its full asking price of $34.99. So we do still have three boxes of these remaining in our store. Next up was something that was in like a, a box of CDs or a box of DVDs and it was kind of like a freebie. We didn't know it was in there. Um, it was, we had picked it up at an estate sale. It was just a bonus item that was in something else we had purchased. I don't even remember what that item was. But um, since we didn't know it was in there, I said that we paid $0 for it because it was just a surprise that we even got it. And this was um, just the CD only. It didn't have a case or anything. It was called the Hollow Sync Solution Awakening Meditation CD. And it was disc two only of like a two disc set, I think. Um, I didn't think it would ever sell, but when we get something like this that we already own, we always list everything because you never know what somebody is looking for. And we did not have this listed for very long and it sold for $9.99, which was our full asking price. And so this is why we always list everything because it's always the most random things that sell for us. So um, this is no exception. Next up was a 2011 brand new in box NFL Green Bay Packers sandwich press and waffle grill. So it had a Green Bay Packers, the Green Bay Packers logo on it that you could press into like a panini press or use as a waffle iron. And it was brand new in the package. It, we took it out and tested it to make sure it wasn't broken or anything since it had gotten tossed around in the bins, but it was in perfect working order and in perfect condition, although the box was a little bit beat up and we disclosed that. It sold on offer to buyer for $24.68 and we had paid just 68 cents for it at the Goodwill bins. That did sit in our store for kind of a long time. But, and it did take up a little bit of space. So I don't know if I would pick that item up again. Next up was a vintage women's Brooks Brothers A-line skirt. This is something that we picked up a long time ago at a thrift store, but I wore it personally for a long time. So I just considered it something of mine that I resold because even though I picked it up initially to resell it, I decided to keep it. So I said that my cost was zero because I have no memory of what I initially paid for it. Um, it did ultimately sell though when I did decide to sell it for $55.98. And this was like a true vintage Brooks Brothers item. It had like a union tag and everything in it. So um, definitely good to pick up stuff that has that union tag and Brooks Brothers Vintage is a great brand to pick up. Next up was an OEM Samsung HDMI cable with Ethernet. 
This we got in a big box of electronics items at an estate sale, and I think we paid maybe $15 for the box, but there was so much stuff jam-packed in this box. When we broke it down, we had only paid 75 cents for each item in the box. So um, this item cost us 75 cents, and it sold for $9.99, and it sold relatively quickly. Next up was a pair of Earth Spirit Mary Jane Comfort walking shoes. They were blue uh, Mary Jane style shoes, very cute. We got these at a thrift store. They sold for $31.98 on offer to buyer and we had paid $4.87 at the thrift store. We got positive feedback on those. Next up was a brand new Bible sealed in its original packaging. And it was a King James version soft cover Bible that we found in the Goodwill bins. That sold on offer to buyer for $7.98, and we had picked it up in the bins for 67 cents. We got positive feedback on that as well. Next up was a brand new and packaged TYR brand swim cap. We had found this at an estate sale for just a dollar, and it sold for its full asking price of $11.99. Next up was a beer pint glass that we got at a local thrift store. We paid just a dollar and eight cents for it. And it was from a brewery local to our area called Rar and Sons, but it was a Mr. T themed Valentine's Day glass. That sold for on an offer to buyer for $19 and 18 cents. Next up was a brand new children's CD. It was sealed, unopened, never used. It was called the Alligator Purse. That we picked up at a thrift store and we paid $1.35 for it. And it sold really quickly, surprisingly, for $21.18 on offer to buyer. We um, do not buy very much at our local thrift store anymore because prices have gotten pretty outrageous, but they still have really good prices on media. And so we'll go scour the media section and pick up any VHS, DVDs, or CDs that are still sealed in the package that we can get for good prices because those items sealed still sell really well for us. And um, this one sold really, really quickly. We were actually surprised. I thought like this was such a rare, weird, specialized item. Who's gonna be looking for this? And we had literally the only one listed on eBay, but it sold very quickly. I was super surprised. And I was surprised by how much it went for as well. So that was a pleasant surprise. Next up was a vintage Playboy. We had purchased a lot of vintage Playboys from um, a lady on next door. I think I had paid like 40 or $45 for all of them. <clears throat> it broke down to $1.43 per issue. This one was the January 1984 issue and it sold um, only for $10.38. We do not have very many left. We have sold out of most of them. Um, I'm not sure I would pick up vintage Playboys again. They just did not have the value that I thought they would have. And unless it was something um, that had a certain celebrity like Madonna or Janet Jackson or somebody, you know, that was going to carry a lot of value in that way to really increase the value of that particular issue, I don't think I would pick a Playboy up. Uh, next up was a vintage men's wool coat. The brand was Gloverall. We had picked this up at an estate sale for $2. This one did have some damage. It had some moth damage on it and it also had some damage to some of the toggles and things like that on the front of it. But had this coat been in like really perfect condition, we would have been able to get probably double what we got for it or maybe even more. Um, so I picked it up because I knew that it was a very high end vintage coat and that it would sell despite the flaws. And it did eventually sell, although it took a little while because probably because of the damage that was on it. It sold for $52.50 on best offer and we had paid just $2 for that at an estate sale. Next up was a starting lineup action figure. This one what belonged to my husband. It was loose out of the package. It sold for just $7 even on best offer. We had this in our store forever, like for a really, really long time, probably two plus years before it actually sold. Next up was a Life Magazine Marilyn Monroe 60th anniversary edition. 
We found this magazine in the Goodwill bins. It was not in perfect condition, but it wasn't in terrible condition considering that it had been, you know, knocking around in the bins for a, a little while. Uh, I picked it up because it had Marilyn Monroe on it and there's Marilyn, a lot of Marilyn Monroe collectors out there and I knew that I could get it for pretty inexpensive because we were at the bins. So I just picked it up on gut instinct. I didn't comp it or anything and I thought, well, if this is not worth anything, we'll just recycle it. But it was worth a little bit. I think we listed it for $12.99 and it ended up selling on offer to buyer for $11.18. And we had paid a dollar fifty for it so you know i probably wouldn't have picked that up anywhere except for the bins but we did make money on that and ended up being worth it next up was a sunset magazine this one we got from the lot of free magazines from lady on next door uh, so we had no cost involved with it all of those magazines were free this one sold for nine dollars and 99 cents which was our full asking price Next up was another item we got in the Goodwill bins. This was um, by the brand Dandy, which they make a lot of plush and things like that. But this was like a door or wall hanging that was made out of yarn and it was um, a Christmas angel and it was new in package. Um, had all of the original packaging with it and it was in great condition. It wasn't dirty or anything, which is amazing because it was uh, uh, ivory in color. And considering it was in the bins and wasn't dirty, just, boggled my mind, but um, that sold pretty quickly for $19.99, which was our full asking price, and we had paid just $0.94 cents for that at the bins. Next up was another dandy item. This one we picked up at the thrift store. This was a large 20-inch um, plush Valentine teddy bear. This one was from 2020. Uh, every year, Dandy puts out Christmas teddies and Valentine's teddies, and people collect those. So we see those at the thrift store and at garage sales sometimes, and if we can get them for cheap enough, sometimes we'll pick them up because um, they do sell, although they don't sell quickly enough for us to pick them up unless they're pretty cheap because they do take up a lot of space. This one though, it did eventually sell for $30 even, which that's a great price because we got that at the thrift store for only $3.24. That was a great deal and we got positive feedback on that one. And that teddy bear was new with tags. Next up was a world map that we got from the other business that we own, which is a custom picture frame shop. This one had some damage. It was um, kind of wrinkled and crinkled from improper storage. I'm not sure where we got this, but you know we have a lot of artwork laying around from customers leaving artwork or you know things that our business has collected along the years. That business has been around since 1969, so there are a lot of things in our storage area that um, we're beginning to clean out, and this is this is one of those. So this sold for $15.18. And which, which was offered to buyer, and there was no cost involved on this item for us. Next up was a vintage cowboy equipment for her. That was the brand. It was a pearl snap cowboy western theme shirt. This we got at a garage sale. We paid $2.75. I had gotten a bulk deal from the seller at this garage sale and paid $2.75 per item and it sold for $19.99 and it sold pretty quickly. Um, any kind of pearl snap Western shirts, especially vintage ones, will sell usually pretty quickly. So we tend to always pick those up if we see them. Next up was a case of 36 Caesar wet dog food. This was something that we used to feed this to our dog and unfortunately he suffered a bout of pancreatitis and um, had to go on a specialized diet. So Mr. Dog thinks he's special and it has to eat this really expensive food now. So we had this case of dog food and decided to just sell it on eBay. We made no money on this. I don't remember how much we paid for it when we bought it for him, but we did. this was definitely not a money maker for us. This was just trying to recoup some of our cost. Next up was a vintage 2001 Bear Factory brand plush calico cat and the cat was wearing like a cute little sailor outfit it was brand new with tags we picked this up at a garage sale for just a dollar and it sold really really quickly 
for $29.99, which was our full asking price. That was a great sale. That is not a brand I'm familiar with. We just picked it up on Gut Instinct and we're really surprised when it sold as fast as it did. And next up was an antique Tabernacle Hymns hardcover book. We got this at a garage sale for just a dollar and it sold for our full asking price of $18.99. Next up was a 2019 McDonald's Happy Meal toy. It was loose, not in the package. We had gotten this in a big bag of toys from the thrift store. We paid 43 cents for it. And this item must have been kind of a harder to find McDonald's toy because it sold for $12.99, which is kind of a higher asking price for a loose McDonald's toy. Um, but it did sell for our full asking price of $12.99, so we were glad about that. Next up is something else we found in the Goodwill bins, and this was a brand new in package, Babies R Us Play Yard Mesh Netting that covered, like you could put it over the play yard to keep mosquitoes and things like that out of the baby's play yard if you're um, outside. So that sold for $18.99, which was our full asking price, and we had paid just 94 cents for that at the bins. And last was a pair of men's Twisted X brand brown leather slip-on. They were like low boots or shoes. They had a Western look to them. We had gotten these at the flea market. We paid $3 for them, and they sold on offer to buyer for $59.98. Um, we had gone to the flea market once and there was this like literal mountain of shoes and like somebody had just taken the back of a truck and like dumped all of the shoes from the back of the truck out. And so we were going, we were digging through this mountain of shoes and trying to like match up all the mates. And we probably got like, let's see, I think we spent $60 there and each pair was $3. So we got 20 pairs of shoes. And that has been the best deal for us. We got so many good pairs of shoes and have made so much money. And we really need to go back to that vendor again and try to get some more. And last but not least, I always go over the collectible cards from my husband's personal collection that sold. This week, we sold eight cards for a total of $24.12. Uh, we didn't sell any high value cards this particular week. Uh, I don't think we had any listed or we didn't sell any, I can't remember but we did sell eight cards, which, which is good for us. Card sales have been kind of low in the last few days, we've noticed, so I'm not really sure why that is, but this particular week, card sales were good. So thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed hearing what we sold for the week of July 9th through 15th. If you're not already subscribed, please make sure you hit that subscribe button with the notification bells turned on so you can be kept informed of all of our latest content. We do try to put out two videos a week and we would love it if you would follow along with us on our reselling journey. Thank you so much. Make sure to hit that like button and we will see you guys next time. Bye.